Welcome to the ILC Dover webinar series. This presentation will focus on modern containment solutions in small molecule oral solid dosage handling processes. I'm Scott Patterson, your presenter today and Vice President of Technical Support at ILC Dover. Our presentation will take you through the as-is paradigm of past containment philosophy and into the 2B concepts when applying state-of-the-art, flexible film, single-use isolators. Here's a great analogy to follow using uh, the Coca-Cola and the 2B concept. Imagine in 1886, a pharmacist named John Pemberton invented the syrup for Coca-Cola. Do you think he would have ever imagined 135 years later that a bottle of water would be more valuable than his syrup mixed in with the water? In most stores that I go to at the checkout, the individual bottles of water are the same or higher price than Coca-Cola. That analogy is used in our containment philosophy when we're thinking about making water for injection for cleaning, the labor for cleaning, and the significant disposal costs. So let's get started. So there's a changing landscape in the containment world for oral solid dosage processing. We look at some of the past drivers and the current situation. So we have in the past, there was master site planning that was an extended period, 10 years or more, often 20 years or more about what a site would do. Now we really have very short range production planning, three years at the longest in many cases, and we follow a lot of the CMO model for multiple use products in a facility. We've seen uh, this model use up to 60 molecules in one facility in one year. We go back to about 10 years ago when the high bar for containment was one microgram per cubic meter and determined on a time-weighted average. That's no longer the case at all, and we're looking at HP APIs that often are at 10 times stricter tolerances at 0.1 micrograms per cubic meter and not a TWA at all, not a time-weighted average. And also, the, the original containment strategy was focused on operator exposure, but now we still focus on operator exposure, but we include Mitigated, mitigating risk for cross-contamination. Before there was central manufacturing and, and tonnage and oftentimes, and now with global manufacturing sites, we're looking at smaller batch sizes, more changeover, which needs to be more efficient and quicker. So we see this as we look at the two isolators at the bottom of the page. And these are the exact same isolators that were tested for the same performance. So we have the past hard wall isolator concept and the future flexible isolator concept. As we look at this, containment designs or modern designs need to be adaptable. On the right hand, we have an analysis that was taken from a consulting firm that specializes in analyzing stainless steel facilities and single use facilities, or let's say our flexible film isolator facilities. We found that the stainless steel facilities are very capital intensive with long build out times of up to five years. The interesting thing that we found in, in this survey was that facilities generally don't make what they're designed to do, that over that five year planning time, the business model changes and they'll possibly take on new molecules or different processes. And also that sales forecast in the pharmaceutical industry can be very inaccurate over three years. We live that in a real-time application shown in the build-out on the left, in the picture on the left, where uh, an order was placed for a flexible isolator system that was for a dispensing, a weigh-in dispense type of process. But during the build-out, that was changed to reconfigure the design to package the API for stability trials. So this was a step change in the deliverable of that flexible isolator. But because we were leveraging this modern technology of flexible isolator systems, we are able to deliver that system on time and under budget. That would have been impossible in using hard wall technology, stainless steel and glass type of technology. When we look at the experience of uh, the past technology, we look at always the need for a mock-up. Uh, when doing isolator designs, it's been a tradition to have a mock-up of the isolator system where the layout and dimensions must be precise because of chain, any changes can cause significant cost and delays. 
SOPs have to be worked out in advance for all functions to be, be performed and the documentation must be specific about those uh, SOPs. Size and weight of the materials and the tools have to be laid out perfectly. Any changes could cause extreme problems in ergonomics when working in hard wall isolators. And we really need to minimize the areas inside a hard wall isolator that could be problematic for cleaning. So these are all of the challenges in the mock-up mock experience that's been traditional. But then what happens, and I think we've all seen this happen before, that the perfect isolator has been built that has had a very significant mock-up study, and we have shorter operators that can't quite get comfortable, and taller, oper taller operators that have the same issues. So there are ergonomic issues and complaints and injuries. We know that process changes in the original workflow is not functional, and this causes perhaps even glove positions to be in the wrong places, or the transfer technology that's used is the wrong size. And then we get away from the isolator and just into the process suite, where that suite may be designated differently, and it's smaller than expected in movement of a hardwell isolator system. But in the modern experience, there's a more nimble design process and it's a more iterative design process. So we see here a design process for a tablet press that was portable and configurable. So we start with the basic tablet press. We begin to create the containment zone. We start positioning the operator gloves where they're going to do the work, transfer points and so forth. And then even in the last step, add a transfer isolator for analytical evaluation. And you can see the picture on the right, that was uh, the final result of the iterative design process. And here we have a very uh, adapted retrofit type of process with minimal changes to the SOPs the operators would do. And in fact, from working without containment in this tablet press was very much the same process as working with the isolator. Also in the modern design, this is a nimble design that can have changes after installation. So it's very easy on flexible film isolators to do these changes, add or move glove locations, add sample sleeves or other additional sleeves. In the last example of the iterative design on the tablet press, we found that there was a problem in the design that there was a fix that was easily done. In circle one, we had engaged uh, breathing HEPA filters to allow for makeup air uh, to address the internal vacuum system that's typical in a tablet press. Well, there wasn't enough airflow through these HEPA filters. So a high flow static HEPA filter was added to the framework and that even allowed for a negative pressure air sweep that improved the overall containment in the system, but it was easily adapted without a high cost or a delay. Also, as we look at modern flexible containment designs, here's an example of one frame, two isolators. So the exact same frame, as you can see, is being used for two different processes just by changing the flexible film isolator. The frame design is developed for the multiple uses, and particularly the transfer systems, or in this case, their bag in, bag out, allows processes to be unidirectional enhancing containment. So we can have products pass in from one side and out of the other side. We also can connect these, uh, these isolators as we'll see in the daisy chain configuration. So you see in isolator number one, it's a design that has eight gloves and does a weigh and dispense application. In isolator two, it's designed with seven gloves and there's a ROTAP system inside for containment during the ROTAP process. So one frame and two completely different designs, which is completely possible with the flexible film isolator technology. So here's the daisy chain design. So the daisy chain provides the ability to work in a single unit flexible film isolator or to combine two or more of these isolators together for a continuous workflow. You know, the isolators can be purpose built for a unit operation. An example of that would be a milling or tabling operation in an isolator, but then it can be connected to two or more isolators to eliminate the risk and the labor time to transfer material from one unit operation to the next. So these daisy chain systems allow for better containment and better process efficiency. 
Also, as we look at modern containment design, we look at when we can deploy the containment system only when we need it. So we see on the far left is an isolator system that's all set up and ready for dispensing a material into a carboy. Well, once the dispensing is done, the isolator is removed. And if we use the six-sided bubble design, there's almost no cleaning that's required. The bubble, the containment bubble or the isolator is disposed of. So here, a collapsible frame has been deployed. And so that collapsible frame is folded and then sent into a storage area. And it's efficiently stored until, again, required for the next time it will be used in the process. So the flexible containment systems can be deployed when needed and when not needed, they're not taking up valuable space in a processing suite. Another example of that is shown here with a roller compactor that's common in the dry granulation workflow. Here with Geertice, a compactor design is easily delivering OEB3 containment for a range of compounds. And this is done without a containment isolator. But with Geertice, we integrated the flange, the containment flange, mounting to their system to make it high containment ready. And the picture on the right now shows that the flexible isolator has been deployed and we can do OEB4 or OEB5 processes for that isolator. So again, this is deploy the containment system when you need it. It's interesting because it's not just for OEB4 or OEB5, but oftentimes with a roller compactor, the process housing has to be opened up. And this is where a value is, is realized by having the flexible containment in place when needed to give that additional containment protection. So let's take a look at the OSD workflow. And here we have an example of the wet granulation. Um, so again, it's configured in a particular way. And we know that the configuration of wet granulation processes, as well as dry granulation, spray drying, hot melt extrusion can change the positions or duplicate the positions of many of these unit operations throughout the workflow. So flexible containment systems are really designed to be adaptable in the workflow to allow for any of the configuration and to ease the overall handling. Again, being able to contain the unit operations as well as the transfers between the unit operations. So now we'll, we'll look at an actual case study in an oral solid dosage process. So let's look at the customer scenario. So here, the, it's a CDMO formulation lab that has complete capabilities already existing for multiple forms of oral solid dosage manufacturing, but no capability for handling HP APIs. So that's the business opportunity, the business opportunity to expand into HP, HP API formulation which has a big impact on increasing sales and revenue. In this customer scenario, which is not unique, it's, it's pretty much the same with all CMOs and CMOs, uh, CMOs and CDMOs is the desire to ramp up quickly in implementing the containment system. And here the time frame was about 20 weeks. And then lastly, the customer had to prove the containment performance of the isolation systems to their new client base Everyone is interested in, in restricting or mitigating cross-contamination, but when handling HP API, it becomes even more critical. So we put together an implementation and a test plan to deal with this customer scenario. The first was to apply retrofit design strategy to existing equipment. So this meant that they didn't have to go out and buy new equipment for the containment isolators to be connected. So this both addresses a CapEx issue, as well as a delivery issue. So here we're going to leverage the flexible film isolator technology to meet that 20 week delivery, speedy de deployment of the solutions with minimal hardware changes to that existing equipment. But the last piece may be the most critical piece was to perform a robust surrogate test using the ISPE SMEPAC protocol. In this scenario, the customer had put a container performance target at 125 nanograms per cubic meter and also wanting statistical confidence factoring into the results. We use the surrogate as naproxen sodium to get the most sensitive results. We did a, a surrogate test on the drug substance really in the weigh and dispense process, just basically meaning the surrogate had no excipient mixed in. And then downstream in the oral solid dosage processes, 
we turned it into a drug product by mixing in excipients to the surrogate API. So this was the actual oral solid dosage dry granulation workflow. And we see in the bubbles one, two, three, and four, these were the processes that we're monitoring in the, um, in the case study. Here, the workflow examples include the weigh and dispense, uh, blending of the excipients and the API together, then off to the roller compactor granulator in a one-step operation, and lastly, an encapsulation process. So before we get into the details in the data on the case study, we need to look at the containment strategy for these multi-step processes because again, we want to look at containing at the source. So each unit operation, we want to be able to have high containment, but we also need to be assured of containment in between the, the processes, in between the steps. And so we need contained transfers. So we see, again, containing at the source can be done by a, a range of methods, but the idea is we want to minimize the cleaning of the suite. And any time that we can minimize the cleaning of the equipment is also important. So the closer to the source of the powder that we can uh, deploy the containment, the better the design's going to be. And then we use the bag in bag out technology. So again, leveraging single use technology for the transfers between the unit operations. And that's combined with the secure crimping system to assure that there's no powder leakage at all from the transfers between unit operations. Now you can see on the right that during this, uh, this test plan, we not only did airborne testing, but we also looked at swab testing to, to assure that we had mitigated all risk of transfers uh, from the surfaces of either a crimp as we see here or surfaces of the containment systems. So we'll start with the weigh and dispense process. Now this was a unique weigh and dispense process that created more challenges because you, as you can see in the picture, they're not only doing a weigh and dispense, but they're doing a manual sieving of the API. But here we had excellent results with this uh, flexible film isolator and following the SMEPAC protocol of three test runs, so three iterations of the process, we ended up with less than seven nanograms per cubic meter containment. And that's our geometric mean. So this is an excellent result in dealing with really the drug substance at this point and getting high containment. Now we'll move on to the roller compactor and granulator. So this is a one process, two steps for uh, roll compaction and then granulating to the particle size distribution. So it's interesting because as we look at these results, again, excellent results of less than 14 nanograms per cubic meter. But when we compare it to the weigh and dispense and then the upcoming uh, encapsulation data, that it's double the weigh and dispense. So here is the point where we need to realize that processes are impacted and the containment capabilities are impacted by many variables. So one, it can be the process. So here we have basically powders and can be fine powders going into the roll compactor versus Let's say when we get to the encapsulation state, we have that granulation going into the process. A powder is, is more difficult to contain as these airborne particulates create more risks in the containment process. Also, we look at uh, the characteristics of the powder. We look at how many transfers are going to be done, as well as uh, the actual process itself. You know, certainly a process like hammer milling is going to be much more complicated for high containment than a granulator on a roller compaction system. But again, here, excellent results of less than 14 nanograms per cubic meter as the geometric mean across three test runs. And then we have the encapsulation. So I referred to this as maybe a best case scenario. So in encapsulation, we're bringing a granulated product into the isolation system. So the granulated product is going to have less small particles that are going to get airborne. And then we're going to put it into a form, the final dosage form of a capsule. And so it's also sort of contained by that capsule. So here we've got one outlier that's about five nanograms per cubic meter. 
but for the most part, we're less than three nanograms per cubic meter in the geometric mean. So this goes to the idea that when we look at each process, we have to evaluate the process, the material being processed, uh, the amount of material in the process and so forth to, to determine what could be the best containment level that we can achieve. Now also there are, there's further technology as in negative pressure systems and other types of systems that we can add in with the uh, flexible film systems to create better containment. But this goes to what level of technology, which goes to the, the cost and the expense of the technology should be applied to each application. And the, the results of the study, I will just go over it quickly, the results and the highlight was really from a containment performance, the customer needed to get to less than 125 nanograms per cubic meter, and that was achieved. We did, if you recall the slide showing the workflow, that there was a blending operation and we actually had a failure and did not meet the containment requirement at the blender, but it was found that a connection had been left open. Um, and so this is a critical reason why to go through these containment studies is to not only test the containment, but to again, look to the process of how operators will use the containment systems. That system was retested and passed. So at the end, the pass-fail was based on the EN 689, which this was prior to the 2018 requirement. And so we had a 25% ratio to the CPT. And so we had to pass less than 31 nanogram per cubic meter and all the systems did pass that. So the containment design was done without mock-up. So going back to one of our original slides, that's a big step in the process. And we've been able to eliminate that mock-up step. So there were flexible isolator design updates based on operator input, but none of that delayed the production. We also had an update of one stainless steel frame that was modified, but that modification only took 48 hours. And if you look at the design of a stainless steel frame that supports a flexible film isolator, it's really a skeleton. And for the most part, it's a non-product contact surface. And so, any type of modifications can be done quickly without the addition of high polish and perhaps even without the addition of passivation. So these modifications can be done very quickly uh, to keep the systems in production. I think a big part of the highlight here is the average isolator system in this project was less than $65,000. There were really minimal equipment modifications with the main equipment modification being a typical flange is added to the existing equipment using a silicon adhesive. So very little modification that needed to be done to the existing equipment. All of this sums up into a massive cost avoidance over using alternative solutions. And that cost avoidance was summarized at $1.4 million. Now, when we look at a 20 week project and being able to use a technology and have cost avoidance, capital cost avoidance of $1.4 million is very significant. So we look at that journey in this, this case study of, of the customer in their as is then to be. So as this project was first imagined, the technology that was considered was traditional hard wall technology and not leveraging uh, the modern flexible isolation technology with flexible film isolators. We were able to streamline production effic efficiencies and boost capacity. We eliminated that large CapEx, as we said, a $1.4 million CapEx avoidance. And then we'll show proof of OpEx uh, savings compared to the stainless steel solutions. The operators were protected. We did the surrogate studies to be sure that uh, we were meeting the containment requirements. This opened up massive opportunities for this end user to gain growth into the HP API market quickly. Another benefit that, that was found in common along the platform of single use flexible film isolators is su superior sustainability. Now, oftentimes this is confused because it's a plastic material that has to be disposed of, but comparing that to the waste generated with cleaning water and solvents and cleaning materials, the sustainability model of a flexible film system is much better than that of the stainless steel system. Modifications were made right at the outset, but uh, again, this didn't hold up production and operators were able to have that input 
after they did the actual operations in the isolators. Excellent, uh, excellent advances for the operators to be able to participate in that. And the project execution was really supported by the engineering drawings, documentation, expediting for the 20 weeks, delivery and installation. So that the customer journey to the 2B, where they had never used flexible film systems before, was, was really excellent. So let's go back to that first slide and, and compare that to our customer experience number seven that we talked about execution excellence in, in the journey to the 2B. So that first slide had these same isolators that we'll look at again. And the hardwall isolator delivery was delayed impacting the customers, the end users engineering batch schedule that was for a new product launch. And, and if you've, you've been in the scheduling of new product launches, it's very complicated and you don't want to lose time. And so here, the hard wall was not going to be delivered and the schedule was going to be impacted. So the customer asked ILC Dover to develop a flexible wall system that was de designed, manufactured and delivered in eight weeks. And so you see these two isolators, they're both made for co-mill containment, are identical. By going with a flexible film isolator, they were able to meet that production launch time. They were able to do the engineering batch and then have the associated market capture. So when we talk about the CapEx and the OpEx savings when using single-use flexible film systems, it's important, but really perhaps the greatest value is how an end user can capture market and move quickly through uh, introduction of new products. We also wanted to leverage customer experience number two that eliminate large and CapEx and OpEx expenses. So here, I think the, the key points are really at the top, the acquisition cost, and this is referring to the isolator example that we just looked at. The flexible film system was delivered for about $55,000 and the hardwall system was about $725,000. Same performance, I think that's a key that we always have to understand that the cost value isn't there if the performance isn't there. Both systems were tested to meet the one microgram per cubic meter, uh, and this was on a time-weighted average. But then as we look down, the real benefit came as the cleaning was reduced dramatically. There is 800% less surface area of the isolator and that really didn't even include all of the glove surfaces and so forth, which can be the most difficult to clean on an isolator. On the flexible system, that's disposed of and we have minimal cleaning. First on the hard wall system, a lot of diligence and validation has to go into that. So certainly here, there was the realization of $670,000 CapEx avoidance, but not really. This was the customer had already decided on sort of their as is, will stay with hard wall technology and not go to the 2B flexible containment technology. So they ended up spending the $670,000. But what they were able to do by leveraging the flexible containment technology is to get that engineering batch done on time to get to their launch so that they could get to market as quickly as possible or as quickly as they had planned on. And this is the same whether you're talking of new launch or you're looking at the benefits of avoiding pleating by using single-use systems and being able to get into production faster and producing more campaigns, which obviously is, is a great uh, value for additional sales and revenue of the end use. For your attention, and you can contact ILC Dover for more information.